Good to see everybody on this Tuesday. Just wanted to get time together as a fellowship to pray for so many people who lost so many loved ones in an unexpected time. And all these, all these shootings remind us, all these shootings remind us of the value of life. The value of waking up every morning and saying, thank you, Lord, for another day. We understand what it means to say, thank you, Lord, for another day. When you see people who are going out their door to school or to shop, to malls, having no idea that was their last day. They're leaving their house just to do their normal activity and end up dead. This is why we say every morning, thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life another day. It makes us really understand the importance of being grateful for every day we get. And like the saying says, tomorrow, tomorrow is promised to no one. And not just shootings, not just shootings. Tomorrow is promised to no one. No matter how you go, it doesn't matter how you go. We're grateful for every day we get. And that's why it's so important. It's so important to wake up with gratitude and say, thank you, Jesus, for another day. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, another day. Because some people didn't wake up. Some people didn't wake up. Their time was when they were asleep. They left the world while sleeping. So now I truly, I truly understand that baby, that baby prayer we taught our kids. Remember that prayer? I say this all the time. That baby prayer we gave our kids. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul will take. I never, I never understood how powerful that prayer is. I said, it's a baby prayer. It's not a baby prayer. That is not a baby prayer. If I should die before I wake, are you kidding me? That is not just a baby prayer. That is a power prayer. That is a power prayer. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul will take. That prayer is cover you as you sleep. And we don't think about that. We don't think about that stuff. We think automatically, we automatically think you go to bed, you wake up. We forget, we forget you might not wake up. We take for granted. We take for granted that we're going to wake up. So we cover ourselves all day long. And forget to cover yourself when you go to sleep. To pray for a hedge of protection during the sleep. A hedge of protection as you sleep during the night. So these are things we got to make sure we, we don't take for granted. It's so easy. It is so easy to take life for granted. Until you get a wake-up call. Until you get a wake-up call. And then someone close to you is taken or something happens close to you and then you wake up. But it's so easy. It's so easy to get complacent and take things for granted. When we should be grateful, we should be grateful for everything. Amen, woman of God. Amen. <laughs> uh, Snurks, uh, I, guess, I guess that's why they say never put off tomorrow what you can handle today. That's that's actually that's actually a scripture, a uh, snurks. That's actually verse uh, Matthew six thirty four. Don't worry about tomorrow. Matthew six thirty four. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Do the things you need to do today. 
Don't worry about tomorrow. That's actually that's actually a scripture. Matthew 6 34. Let God handle tomorrow. Just worry about today. Worry about today and get that done. And then when tomorrow becomes today, then you worry about tomorrow. When it becomes today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Kingdom biz, kingdom biz, and kingdom biz, as you know, for those who don't know, kingdom business is twofold. I talk about all kinds of things, and also in kingdom business, we also get give you a chance to share whatever the topic is. Now, the entire title, the Holy Spirit gave me the entire title during prayer. The Holy Spirit always gave me the title for kingdom biz during prayer time because it's right hot off the press. <laughs> So today's title, Kingdom Biz, Kingdom Biz, the other part of the title, rest in what you know. Rest in what you know. I'll tell you that in a minute. Kingdom Biz, rest in what you know. Now what brought this, what brought this title and this lesson today is in the wake of all the shootings, in the wake of all the things that happened unexpectedly not just in school shootings and buffalo but even before that there have been shootings all kinds of shootings all over the place all kinds of violence all kinds of unexpected events that take lives and the first thing people say the first thing people say where's god where'd god go what happened to god where is god now that first thing, the first thing people say, where is God? And first of all, let me say this. I say this every time I do this topic. Every time I do this topic, you cannot answer that question. First of all, you cannot answer that question. How come God, how come God didn't do something? Where did God go? How come he did how come he let that happen? When you try to answer that question, that means you're trying to know what is in God's mind. You're claiming to know why God let things happen. We don't know why things happen. We don't know why God lets things happen. Because we don't know what God's master plan is. Yes, it looks mad. This is, this is terrible. This is terrible. Where was God? Where was God? God is still in control of everything. And the first thing, the first thing to help us understand, if someone ever asks you that, you tell, first of all, I can't answer for God. And then you say Isaiah 55, 8, 9. The text today, Isaiah 55, 8, 9. God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts, as high as the heavens are above the earth, God's ways are are higher than our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. We can't even begin to explain God or why he does what he does or when he does it. Because everything, everything he does is a part of his master plan. And we can't see the master plan. We can't see the master plan. Sometimes God sets things in motion here for things to move there. Let's say, let's say for example, let's put for example, God lets something happen right here. But this happens here, so this can happen over here. And we don't even know what that is because the picture is bigger than we can see. And sometimes you look back over years and say, wow, if that hadn't happened, this wouldn't happen. Because everything God does, everything God does, everything that God allows, he's in control of everything. So the only way to keep us under control, help us keep at peace, is to trust. That's why we say, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. you got to trust. We must trust. We must trust God. Hey, Miss T., we must trust God. Because when you don't trust, here comes fear. 
here comes the devil and the devil's lying in your ear when you don't trust the lord all kinds of things come in your mind to cause doubt and fear and stress and worry we can't be the, the title says the title says rest in what you know and what do you know what do you know for a fact you know for a fact that god's been good to you if you have something to rest on and remember when god moved in your life rest on what you know well you know what, what all i know is god is real to me because god did this or god did that when god moves in your life personally when god moves in your life personally that is your testimony yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know what you believe. I don't know what you believe, but God is real to me because God did this for me. God saved me here. God saved me there. So for me, God is real. I don't care what you believe. What I believe, God is real because he moved in my life many times. So rest on what you know. You know for a fact, you know for a fact that God moved in your life. We shared testimonies a few weeks ago. Every testimony is God letting you know he's here. I'm still in control. Hey, Cynthia, when you understand without a shadow of doubt that God has moved in your life, that is his way of letting you know, I'm still here. I'm still in control. But you cannot rest on what you don't know. You cannot rest on what you don't know. We don't know why God does things the way he does. We don't know God's master plan. But we do know, we, do, we know what the word says. We do know the word says, end times are coming. We know that. The word says it. So we know that part. But we can't rest on, we can't try to figure out how is God going to do it? How is God going to do this? How is God going to do that? We can't try to figure that out. We cannot try to figure God out. We can't figure God out. He's too big to figure out. So what you have left is, what you have left is, how has God shown himself to you? And all the ways God showed himself to you is what you rest on. Rest on what you know. God healed me. God saved me. God protected me. God delivered me. Those are ways he showed you who he is in your life. And every time, every time he moved in your life, you got to appreciate that. Amen, Carl. You got to appreciate every time God did something for you. That's his way of letting you know, yes, I'm real. Yes, I'm real. Look what I did for you here. Look what I did for you there. Just in case you forgot. Just in case you forgot. Let me remind you, of that time I saved you here I saved you there I could have been dead years ago but I saved you here and I saved you there you actually you actually think you did that by yourself hey Michelle you actually think you saved yourself are you really that blind are you really that blind that you really thought you saved yourself are you kidding me See, sometimes, sometimes all you can say is but God. Has anyone, give me a thumbs up, has anyone ever had a moment where but God is the only answer? Somebody says, well, how did that happen? But God. Give me a thumbs up if you ever had a but God moment. Can't explain it. Can't even explain it. All you can say is but God. I don't know. I don't know how. He, I don't know how he did it, but God. Amen. Amen. Everybody. Everybody's got one. See, every everyone's got one. See, everyone's got one. These are ways. This is a way to rest on what you know. If you had a but God moment, that is resting on what you know. So when somebody comes to tell you, man, I don't believe God is real. I don't believe God is real. Look, you know what? I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you believe. I know God is real. I know God is real. He's been good to me. 
He's been real to me so many times. So I don't care what you say. Naysayer, unbeliever, agnostic, hater. I don't care what you I don't care what you believe. I know for a fact God is real. Because of all the ways he's moved in my life to let me know he's real. So don't let anyone steal your joy of your testimony. That is God's way of saying God is real. Just a testimony. Your testimony is the proof God is real. So all these people, all these people, I don't, I won't see it. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You don't need to believe it. You don't need to believe it. It happened to me. The miracle happened to me. I don't care if you'll believe it. I could care less if you don't believe my miracle. But this is what happened to me. And I know for a fact, if that didn't happen to me, I would not be here today. So don't tell me you don't believe my testimony because it happened to me, not you. It happened to me. And the only one who needs to believe it is me because it happened to me. Some people will try to steal the joy of your testimony. I don't believe that. One, one person, when I first started the other channel, <laughs> when I first started the other channel, I had a page of testimonies, and this person came on and said, "Man, I don't believe. I don't believe this mess. All these people talking about miracles. I don't believe none of this mess." This person actually posted. He posted on my testimony channel at the time. And he said, I don't believe any of this mess. These people are just making things up. So I came on, I said, you know what, guy? You know what? It's not, it's not for us to make you believe. These people are telling you what God did for them. Whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter to them because it mattered to them. God moved in their life. It is their testimony. Who are you to come on this channel and tell people, you don't believe it. I don't care. I don't care if you don't believe it. My testimony is my testimony. And what God did for me is what I rest on. I rest in what I know. And I know that God saved me many times over. So don't try to convince someone who is an unbeliever that your testimony is real. It's not important. It's not important to try to convince them. They're trying to steal the joy of your testimony. Joy stealers, peace stealers, they're all antichrist spirits trying to steal your joy of your testimony. Your testimony. They're trying to steal the joy of your testimony, of your proof that God moved in your life. So don't ever be ashamed of your testimony. Your testimony is living proof by you still being here by you living through it, you are living proof that God is real in your life. And the reason we're all here right now in this fellowship, all the thumbs up just now, all you put your thumbs up when I ask you, have you ever had a but God moment? And all the thumbs went up. Almost, almost everybody here said, yes, I've had a but God moment. A but God moment is all you need you don't need anything else but a gut, but God moment to let you know God is in charge. God is still in control. Amen, Miss D. Amen. So, so don't even, talk to the hand, talk to the hand, and don't even try to steal the joy of my testimony. Amen. Uh, uh, Jonna, uh, they 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 know better than the, they know better than you what's going on in your life, and we know that God is more real. But anything or anyone in this world. Amen, John. That's right. We know it. We know it. Because your testimony is proof. Your testimony is all the proof you need. And, and you, don't, you don't need to convince anybody else. Don't even waste your brain cells or your energy trying to tell somebody else your testimony is real. Don't even waste your time. Don't even waste your time trying to convince an unbeliever. An unbeliever doesn't believe in anything. An atheist doesn't believe in anything. So don't try to convince somebody that your testimony is real because it's real to you and it happened to you. 
So rest, like, like Titus says, rest on what you know. Now, when, when you get in the areas of what you don't know, that's when it gets dangerous. Don't try to explain something you don't know. Don't try to act like you know and you really don't know. That makes things worse. Especially, especially if, it, if you're talking about the word of God. Some people, some, some wolves in sheep's clothing, some false prophets, some false prophets know the word better than we do. And they use the word and manipulate the word. If they think you don't know the word, they will manipulate what is in the word and change it to the false doctrines. They'll start with they'll start with the scripture you know, and say, "Oh man, I, I know the scripture." And they keep talking, and next thing you know, they took you from a real scripture, a smooth speech, a real scripture, and they took it into a false doctrine. That's why you got to make sure you pay attention to your Holy Spirit will tell you, uh, excuse me, yes, that was scripture, but what he's saying now, that's nowhere in the word. That is nowhere in the word. That's why the Bible says, test every spirit. Test every spirit. If you're, if you're somewhere and you hear a sermon and a sermon sounds really good and all of a sudden something sounds strange, you say, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. The Holy Spirit is saying, uh, danger, danger, false doctrine. The Holy Spirit is warning you. You know the word of God. When you study the word of God and show yourself, show yourself approved, you study the word so when you hear something, you recognize it as not being it. Even if you, know, even if you don't know the word perfectly, if you study the word all the time and you hear something, that is a variation of the word. The Holy Spirit will make you feel uneasy. And you go, that doesn't sound right. Well, uh, where is that in the Bible? Now, if you're, able, if, if you're able to ask that question, ask it. If you can't ask the question, go home and look for what they said. The Bible says, the Bible says, when you test every spirit, make sure it is saying what is in the word. To make sure it is of God. A false prophet is taking what's in the Bible and manipulate it to what the false doctrine is. But to pull us in, they pull us in with the word of God and then change it as they continue to teach. And next thing you know, this doesn't sound right. Because in the transition of smooth speech, they took the word and very smoothly changed it into a false doctrine. That is a wolf in sheep's clothing. They, they come onto you as a real man of God. But behind a wolf in sheep's clothing, under the sheep's clothing, is the Antichrist spirit to lead you away from God with a false doctrine. And that's why it's so important when you stay in the Word, stay in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will always let you know something doesn't sound right. And the reason you say that is because the Holy Spirit is telling you something's not right in what this person is saying. And then go look for it. Don't take anything face value, especially if the person doesn't tell you where it is in the Bible. That's why I try to give you guys so many scriptures. When I say something, I'm trying to show you where I'm getting it from in the Word of God. So you can go back and look for it yourself, read the scripture, and understand how the lesson today is tied to what we're talking about. And that enables you to bring more understanding of the Word and understanding in your life to use the Word. It's so important to be able to comprehend the Word in order to be able to apply it into your life. Amen. Of course, now, the other scripture, the other text, the, Isaiah was the first text. The second text, we also know. The second text, we also know. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We know this. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. In order to rest on what you know, you what? 
You must what? Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Now, in, in, in connection with this lesson, when, you, when you're reflecting on what you know, the reason we trust, the reason we trust is because God has already moved in your life. When God has moved in your life, you trust even more. Some people don't realize, and that's why it's so important to take a journal and write things down. Some people think, well, I don't, I don't remember God moving in my life. I've had people say this. I don't, I don't think God, has ever, <laughs> I don't think God has ever moved in my life. One person told, one person said this to me years ago. Man, I don't think God has ever moved in my life. Really, really. You don't, <laughs> you don't think God has ever moved in your life. Uh, how about, how about? Waking you up in the morning. <laughs> First of all, if you think God has not moved in your life, because you you're expecting um you're expecting a part in the Red Sea. Sometimes your miracles, sometimes the miracles in your life is just you waking up. First miracle, first miracle, you woke up. The first miracle, you woke up today. You didn't die while you're asleep. First miracle, you woke up to see another day. If you think God has not moved your life, think about little things. He woke you up this morning. He woke you up and your heart is still beating. Your heart is still beating. We have no idea how many heartbeats are guaranteed. Your, your heart beats hundreds of thousands of times in a lifetime. Your heart still beating. Your heart still beating. You're still breathing. Are you, are you breathing right now? Uh, excuse me. Some people are wearing masks. Some people can't breathe. Some people had to have surgery because their lungs are bad. You're breathing okay. You woke up. Your heart's still beating. Are, are, are you able to walk right now? Uh, or can you walk right now? Some people can't walk. Are, are you able? Do you have both hands, both legs? Some people lost limbs. When you stop and be grateful for what you got, when you stop and be grateful for what you do have, you understand the importance of being grateful. And then you understand God has moved. He blessed you with health. He blessed you to have all your limbs. He blessed your heart to keep beating. You're still breathing. You're still walking around and not bound to the bed. Hey Liz, hey Liz. These are little things some people forget about. And when you, thank you, thank you, Don. Your sight, hearing, smell. These are things we all take for granted sometimes. To smell the food and be able to smell. The first COVID sign, the first COVID sign, people can't taste anything. Remember uh, last couple of years, one of the signs of COVID was you can't taste what you eat because COVID, when it attacks your lungs, one of the side effects of COVID is you can't taste. You lose your taste. And a lot of times, that also affects your smell. If you can't smell it, some foods, some foods, if you hold your nose, you can't taste it. So if something's wrong with your smell, you can't taste the food either. But you can smell the food you can smell the food and taste the food and you can hear, you can hear. Oh, can you hear? I'm just trying to show you how God is blessing us every day in little things. People think that God only moves in big miracles. These are little things we take for granted. Just life, things God is doing every day. He's doing these things every day. And they're not a big part of the Red Sea. They're still him keeping us alive from day to day. Amen, Gary. You, you, had, you had blood clots. He saved you from that. Amen. He, he saved you from blood clots in the lungs. And that's serious. Hey, Greg, that's serious. If God saved you from blood clots 
in your lungs, that can take you out right there. Where blood clots go into your lungs and go into your heart next. So the fact he saved you, Gary, from blood clots in your lungs, praise God, thank you, Jesus. I, 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 Gary, I'm shouting for you. <laughs> I'm shouting for you right now. But God, but God, but God saved you. When we sing that song every day, God saved us from something. And we sing that song every day. Just say, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all you brought me through. Oh, Lord, I'm in love with you. And that's why we sing it every day. To thank the Lord for all the ways he saved us physically, spiritually, emotionally. All the ways he protected us. All the ways he's moved in our life. Those are all the but God moments. Praise God, Gary. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. M matter of fact, Gary, Gary, don't forget to put that under the other lesson. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I forgot the number of that lesson. Uh, Gary, remember the lesson where we said sharing testimonies? Gary, please put that testimony under the lesson that says sharing testimonies. I want that testimony under sharing testimonies. So please, Gary, don't forget, put that testimony under sharing testimonies about two weeks ago. Amen? See, this, this, this is what I'm talking about. Rest in things you know. This is why I say rest in things you know. It, it feeds your faith. Stop trying to convince people. Stop trying to convince people who don't believe. Stop trying to convince people who are haters, unbelievers, agnostics. People trying to steal your joy of your testimony. Stop trying to convince them and just enjoy your praise report, your testimony. That is the power of your testimony. If they don't believe it, it's their problem. That's why we share. That's why we share testimonies. To let other people know, yes, God is real. Yes, and God is in control. Good or bad, God is still in control. It may seem bad. It may seem unexplainable. But we can't explain what we don't know. Let me say it again. We cannot explain what we don't know. And I had a response. I responded to a person a few days ago. <laughs> now this person, I think this person is a, a believer who, who's, who's drifted. This person posted, well, if the word says, the word says, these signs should follow those who believe. Now, the person, the person knew the word. The post said, if, okay, the word says, these signs should follow those who believe. In my name, cast out demons, speak with the tongues, take up serpents. If they drink anything daily, it will have no means hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, the, the guy, he posted that. He said, so, so if this is what Christians are supposed to do, how come they're not doing it? Now listen, this can trick you. This can trick you. This guy knew the word. He quoted that scripture. These signs should follow. And he listed. He said, well, if Christians are supposed to be able to do this, how come they're not doing it? He got arrogant. He got arrogant. How come they're not doing it? What's wrong with them? Now, I told you before. I told you before. The word says each person is dealt a measure of faith a measure of faith measures can be changed that scripture that scripture is a bar jesus set the bar for everyone who believes to to push for these signs to follow those who believe now you got to work faith building is work faith building is work in order to get to level of being able to lay hands on the sick and they will recover, you must be so confident. You must be so confident in your faith that when you lay hands on someone, you know without a shadow of doubt they're going to be healed. If you have any doubt 
don't touch him. If you have any doubt, don't touch a person to lay hands on them. See, you have to believe in the authority in you. Amen, Miss T. When you say, I must believe when I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring healing to this person right now in Jesus' name. And you lay hands on them. Now, two things, two things. First, you, the believer, must believe what's coming out your mouth. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring healing to this person right now in Jesus' name. Now, now you just use your authority. You said, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let's say, let's say, for example, you believe everything you said, but, but the person you're praying for doesn't believe. The person you're praying for doesn't believe. That means even though you prayed right, they didn't get healed because of their unbelief. You prayed right. You use your authority. And you prayed exactly right. I, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring healing to this person. And the person was not healed. If that person doesn't believe in healing, guess what? It doesn't matter what your prayer is. Their unbelief is canceling your prayer. Remember, remember, all the times Jesus said, when Jesus heard, when Jesus healed people, he said over and over, because of your faith, you're healed. Every person Jesus healed. He said, your faith has made you whole. Get up. He, he's telling the person who's asking for prayer, your belief in being healed must be as strong as the person who's praying over you. You cannot heal someone who doesn't believe in healing. Their own doubt is blocking your prayer and their healing, even though you are praying correctly in confidence. But their unbelief is keeping them from receiving the blessings of your prayer. And you did nothing wrong. You did it exactly right. You prayed with confidence. And you believed the words you say. And you, and you spoke it. But their, un, their lack of healing is not because of you. It's because of their unbelief. I want to make sure you understand this. Because unbelievers and all these other people... Will try to make you think where's your power i thought you had god in you i thought just the fact they said i thought you had god in you how come you're not healing that's a doubter just those words is a doubter well i th i thought you had god in you i thought you could do this i thought you could do that just those words right there are words of doubt and then they're asking well show me this this happened this 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 actually happened to me I, I was on tour i was on tour and uh, i told you this story i was the only i was the only christian in the show i was on tour and people people knew i was a christian i had my bible i had my altar in the dressing room and so the star the now the star of the show the star of the show who saw me praying every day in my dressing room he actually came to me and said uh fitz Fitz, I'm having serious, I'm having serious back problems. Can you pray for me? No, I'm saying, wait a minute. The star of the show is coming to me. I had a small part. He comes to me, the star of the show, to ask me, can I pray for him? Because he sees me praying every day in the dressing room. So we went to a room. His back was really hurting. And I laid hands on him. I laid hands on him. And I pray for Father God in Jesus' name. Bring healing to his back, Lord. Bring healing to his back. Take away the pain, Lord, and bring healing to him right now so that he'll be able to make it through the show in Jesus' name. And do you know the pain went away? And he was able to do the show. He came back and said, man, thank you so much for that prayer. I don't know, I don't know how I'd make it. Now, the, the star of the show was Jewish. And he came to me, a Christian, to ask me to pray for his back. Now, he believed that if he came to me for prayer, and I'm praying, I'm a praying person, he believed that if I prayed for him, he would be healed. And he was. Now, now, the next night, the next night, <laughs> the very next night, another star in the show heard about his healing. And she came to me. 
And now, now listen, listen to this. She came to me and said, I heard you. I heard you. You healed the star last night. Well, maybe you can heal me. Now, look at look at what she said. I heard you heal a star last night. Maybe you can heal me. I have some I have some coughing problems. I knew just as she said it, just the way she said it, she didn't believe it. She had an attitude. Well, I heard you. You heard you healed him. Well, maybe you can heal me. She got an attitude. She got an attitude. Well, I almost said, don't even come to my tent. Don't go way, way by window. <laughs> You're not gonna get healing, but I prayed for her. I prayed for her the same way. I knew she wasn't going to be healed because she came in with an attitude. Show me your healing. Show me you can heal. Do it for me. You did it for him. Show me. I heard you can heal. That, that attitude is a doubt, an attitude of doubt. So as a fact, she, did, she wasn't healed. She wasn't healed because what happened? She didn't expect healing. She came in with a show me. Show me that. He came in with humility. He came and said, man, uh, I, I see you pray a lot. Can you pray for me? He came in humility, receiving the prayer. She came in an attitude. My prayer, my prayer was the same. My prayer didn't change. But the attitudes were different. His attitude, the star's attitude, came in expecting healing. She came in with an attitude, show me. Show me. So see, the person's attitude can block your prayer even if you're praying right. I want to make sure you understand this because when people try to challenge you, they try to challenge you and say, I thought I thought God was in you. Yeah, God is in me. He's not in you. <laughs> yeah, people, people come at you. Yeah, I thought you had God in you. I thought you were a healer. I thought God was in you. And I say, yes, he is in me, but he's not in you. So guess what? If you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, go way, way. Hey, you, you don't believe it? Go way, way by window. Go way, way from my window. I'm praying for people. I'm praying for people who believe. I'm praying for people who believe. Not unbelievers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Misty. I thought you were a Christian. I am a Christian, but what are you? <laughs> I should have said that, Misty. I should have said, well, what are you? I am a Christian, and I, the God is in me. But a prayer cannot heal doubt. I did a, I did the poem yesterday. The power of doubt. The power of doubt will cancel every prayer. The power of doubt will cancel every blessing. The power of doubt will turn everything you say against you. You, you can pray for yourself, but if you doubt your prayer, stop praying. If you doubt your own prayer, stop praying. There's no need to pray if you have doubt in your heart. That We said the scripture yesterday. If you pray, pray without doubt. And it'll be done. And so that's not easy. That is no easy challenge. So we must also, the more you pray, the more you pray, the stronger you get, the more you believe it, the more your faith comes. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The more you feed your faith, the stronger your faith gets and the stronger your belief gets in being healed and things moving in the spirit. That's why we spend time every day studying the word of God and being close to God and feeling his love his power because the more you spend time with God the closer you get to him the more power you feel in him he's already in us the more you pray the more you feel his power in us being activated the Holy Spirit is God in us we forget that the Holy Spirit is a part of God in us if we believe in God, we must believe in the Holy Spirit who is a part of God that is in us. So when you're praying the Holy Spirit, you're talking to the Lord. When you pray to the Holy Spirit, you are talking to the Lord because the Holy Spirit is the part of God in us to give us the authority. 
That's why we have the authority. When you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the authority is already in us. Your mouth has to activate it. Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus told us, he taught us. You have the power in you. The comforter is in us. The, the helper is in us. So if you ask anything in my name, if you ask anything in my name, Jesus is teaching us how to activate the power. How to activate the power in you is by saying, if you use anything, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He's telling us how to activate the power inside of us, the anointing inside of us, the Holy Spirit inside of us. Open your mouth, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray this, I pray that in Jesus' name. He taught us how to use the name of Jesus in order to activate your prayers. Activate what you say in spiritual warfare. Every attack, every demonic attack, Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke depression. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke fear, worry, stress, anxiety, whatever it is. If it's not like God, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, activates the Holy Spirit in you to rebuke whatever it is trying to attack you from any side. Rest in what you know. We know the Holy Spirit's in us. We know we have the authority. Rest in and what you know, we have the authority. We have the whole armor of God. We have Psalm 91 protection. Rest on what you know. Not on what you don't know. Rest on what you know. Especially when you come up against unbelievers. And all these other folks who are trying to steal your joy. Now, have any, in the next 10 minutes, have, has, have any one of you had an experience where you had to just use your judgment. Anyone had to use your judgment of restraint against unbelievers. Remember, our job is not to convince an unbeliever. Our job is not to convince an unbeliever. Our job is to show the love of God in us, whether they believe or not. Have you ever had an encounter with someone who doesn't believe and you had to hold on to your to your faith to keep them from stealing your joy. Have you ever had that encounter? But this way you guys respond. Has anyone had that had that kind? Uh snurks? That that a but God moment? Amen, snurk, a but God moment at work. You get a lot of that at work. You have so many spirits at work. So many spirits at work. And some spirits at work are antichrist spirits. So your job is not to try to change an antichrist spirit. Your job is to hold on to who you are in Christ. And when you hold on to who you are in Christ, that convinces them that you're not playing. I'm, I'm serious. Hey, I love the Lord. I praise every day. I praise give praise every day I praise we sing it every week amen sometimes <laughs> sometimes the doubters are co-workers sometimes the doubters are family members sometimes it's actually church members I've even had church members speak doubt even though we're in church we're in church and it a church co-member is speaking doubt as they're in the house of God. What? <laughs> we got to protect. We must protect what we know at every turn. For example, for example, if you're speaking to a Christian who is speaking doubt, we must we must humbly remind them that they're speaking against the will of God that's in them to walk in victory. Now there, there we do have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to, to, to teach someone who is saved and maybe not. They don't understand it. Uh, Snurks, my previous supervisor was bothered because a co-worker spoke a blessing over you and said he hasn't done anything for her by now. She passed away shortly after and I said to myself, now she knows. So the co-worker, wait, let me go back. 
So the co-worker, okay, so the co-worker who spoke a blessing over you said God hasn't done anything for her. So the person who spoke over you said God hasn't done anything for me and then they passed away. So they, they spoke doubt and confidence and then passed away. Wow. Amen, Snurks. Amen. Uh, Gary, I read a scripture to my nephew one day. He called me a Jesus freak. <laughs> hey, Gary, you gonna get that a lot. If you love Jesus, be ready. Be ready to be, to be called a Jesus freak. See, people don't understand. If you love Jesus, that's not being a freak. If you live by the word and you love Jesus, you're not a freak. You are a follower of Christ who loves God. But people who don't understand what it means to live the word, they'll call you a Jesus freak because you're living the word every day. And we have to teach people what it means to live by the word every day. Amen. Woman of God, a classmate told me his grandfather had a church and he saw people being healed, but he decided to no longer believe. Yep. Yep. Woman of God, nothing, nothing you can do. They see people being healed and don't believe it. They, he actually saw people being healed and still didn't believe. There's nothing you can do. That I, shake, woman of God, shaking my head, shaking my head on that one. Amen. Oh, 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 Snurks. The supervisor said that. Okay, the supervisor said that. Uh, uh, when when the supervisor saw the other person speaking over you, the supervisor said. I, God's done nothing for me and the supervisor is who passed away, right? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Snurk. The one who the one who said God hadn't done anything for me watched the other person speak over you and the supervisor said that. Amen. Uh, Greg, uh, yes. Uh, uh, God, do not heal. They were... Well, uh, uh, Gary, uh, Greg, do you mean that someone, someone said someone said uh at work someone at work uh, greg said don't heal uh, tell me that again greg amen uh don a close a close friend's sister has cancer he asked me to talk to her we talked we started it went on she realized how god has helped you through your cancer amen so your testimony your own testimony gave her strength right don your testimony of what God has done for you and your cancer battle gave her strength. Amen. Amen. That's the power of your testimony. Amen, Don. Thank you. Don, she accused you of what? She accused you of trying to convert her. What? Get out of here. Oh, my God. You're trying to share with her God's goodness in your healing with cancer. And she, she accused you of trying to convert her and shut you down. See, the devil's busy. You're, you're a walk, a, a Don. Don, you are a living testimony of God's healing power. And instead of receiving your word, she thinks you're trying to convert her by sharing God's healing with her and she shut it down. See, you can't, you can't do nothing about that. Nothing you can do. Nothing you can do when a person is filled with doubt there's nothing you can do. Amen. Justine, the devil wants us to walk away from God and your faith. Amen, Justine. Exactly. The devil wants us to walk away from God and our faith. Exactly. Exactly. Tanya, I'm proud to be a Jesus freak. <laughs> Amen, Tanya. Uh, Tanya, Tanya, t-shirt, t-shirt. <laughs> Tanya, I think there's another t-shirt coming up. <laughs> I'm proud to be a Jesus freak. Amen. Excuse me. Live by the word. Hey, save me, Lord. Save me. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, Tanya, God is still in the healing business. One of God. I debated with a classmate for 40 minutes and gave up. His mind was made up that this is when you learn only God can save. Amen, one of God. All you can do is plant the seed. All you can do, one of God, is plant the seed. You can't make a person. You, what, now, now, a woman of God, I bet you, woman of God, what you planted that day, 
will make a difference one day. I, I, I firmly believe if you plant the seed for 40 minutes, believe me, somewhere down the road, years later, the seed you planted that day is going to show up some way. I guarantee you, if you spent 40 minutes sharing the word of God and they didn't receive it, I guarantee you something you said that day did take root. And you may not see it for years. And he'll come back to you later and say, man, remember when we had that talk and you told me about the Lord? Man, that, that's, that stuck in my mind for years. See, you plant, believe me, you did plant seeds. So, so don't feel bad. Amen. Amen, woman of God. Uh, Liz, a friend of mine said, I'm obsessed with God. <laughs> obsessed? Hey, love the Lord. A love Lord is obsession. Hey, you know what? See, people don't understand when you live by something. When you live by something, you do it every day. When you live by the word, do it every day. We, we live a Christian life. You do it every day. You praise every day. You worship every day. Whether in fellowship or not. In fellowship or away from fellowship. We praise every day. Talk to the Lord every day. Because we live the word every day. Living it is doing it every day. So don't worry about that, uh, Liz. Don't worry about that. It's okay to be obsessed. You just live the word. You just live the word. Amen. Erica, my brother Chino was talking very nasty. I told him, may God bless you in all your ways. He left and walked away. <laughs> See, Erica, even that was a response. Erica, he heard you. Even though, even though, even though he walked away, what you said, instead of arguing, you could have argued. You could have come back on him. But what you came back with is a love of the Lord. And that threw him. He walked off because he was expecting an argument. But you came back with, may the Lord bless you. So you, you deterred a confrontation with the love of the Lord. And believe me, and believe me, that still rocked him. Amen. Amen, Don. <laughs> you can't pl plant it seeds. Amen. The whole point is planting seeds. Net <laughs> Nedra, I witnessed it to a fellow. He said, you believe in this white man religion? And I said, it's not about race. He's still angry. <laughs> still, see, people have been brainwashed because if you look at, if you look at the Bible, the Bible is not a white man's religion. The Bible over time, by the way people show pictures in the Bible, what's been done is in a different translations of the Bible and they put pictures in, whoever is promoting the Bible in that region makes the characters look like who is promoting the Bible. If you really look at the Bible, there are many races in the Bible. The Bible is not just one race, but see, if I'm selling a Bible in Europe, the, everybody in the Bible is going to look like European. If I'm selling a Bible in Africa, everybody in the Bible is going to look like Africa. So what, what has happened in the pictures over the time is people, wherever they're promoting the Bible, the pictures they put with it are in line with their culture, their race. But when you actually look at the Bible and read where these places took place, the Bible is filled with all kinds of races. The Bible is filled with all kinds of races. Uh, Jonna, a very close friend of mine who still lives in North Carolina, shared the Lord with me and prayed for me six years later before you finally came to the Lord. So the planet, the seed was planted for six years in Jonna, and then she came to the Lord. Amen, Jonna. Amen. That shows how long a seed may take, but you still had the seed planted. Don't worry about how long it takes. Just plant the seed. Amen. Uh, Cynthia is actually a compliment. Amen. Being a Jesus freak, uh, obsessed with God, is a compliment. It shows they see your love. Amen, Cynthia and Liz. They see your love. If someone says, you're obsessed with the Lord, that means they see you praise and pray and stay in God every day. That's why they say it. It shows you're showing your who you are in Christ. 
Nedra, I told, I, I told him Jesus loved him. I gave him the scriptures, tracks, and moved on. Nedra, that's all you can do. You plant the seed and go on. Amen, Nedra. Plant the seed and go on. You gave him tracks. You pray for him and move on. The seed was planted. Amen. Praise God. Erica, I mean, he was expecting, exactly, exactly, Erica, he was expecting an argument. And you came back with the love of the Lord. And that threw him. That's what I'm talking about. That threw him. Amen. 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 Praise God, family. Praise God. You guys got some great, that was some great responses. I thank you so much for your responses. If you have any other responses, make sure you put them under this video. If you have anything else to share based on this lesson, please put them under this video. I can respond to them later on and we can respond to each other. So I want to thank you guys for sharing such great responses. It shows how God has moved in your life and how we let the love of the Lord touch others. Amen, Jonna. Paul plants Apollos waters and God, God grants the increase. Let God finish it. Plant the seed and let God do the rest. Don't worry about it. You can't plant water and deliver in one step. It almost never happens. Plant, water, deliver almost never happens in one step. You have to plant it, let somebody else water, and then God delivers. It comes in steps. You, you, you'll never, you'll almost never have all three things happen in one step. You plant, someone else waters, and God delivers. If the person is not walking in rebellion. Amen. So praise God. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this great day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this great day of kingdom business. Coming together and sharing, Lord how we deal with people in the world, how we deal with others who don't know you, how we deal with others who refuse to know you. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson of learning how to rest, rest in what we know. And what we know, Lord, is how real you are to each one of us here, how real you are in our life, Lord. And that's all that matters, Lord. That is all that matters, that we know how real you are. Bless every fellowship member right now, live or archive, who has this testimony of you moving mightily in their life, Lord. Give us strength, Lord. Give us supernatural strength to always be ready to share our testimony and the power in our testimony with whoever the Holy Spirit says, share it with. Because someone is always waiting to hear our testimony. And that's why God gave it to us. God gave us every testimony to be a blessing to someone else. That's why he gave it to us. So Father God, let us be able to walk boldly. Walk boldly in our testimony. And share it with others. Along with the word and your light in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God, fellowship. Praise God. Thank you so much for sharing. Before we close, I know someone's watching and someone probably heard the testimonies you shared and the lesson and the prayers and the praise. Someone's watching right now who doesn't understand why this fellowship is always on fire. Come together six days a week and praise and worship and fellowship always on fire, not knowing, having never met physically, but knowing we all love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that makes us all brothers and sisters in Christ. But right now, someone watching doesn't understand what fellowship really is. And this fellowship is a perfect example of what fellowship is all about. Iron sharpening iron around the world, loving the Lord together, wherever we are in the world. Amen. So right now, as I go into prayer salvation and the closing prayers, as always, 
please no typing until after the closing prayers. Anything typed during the closing prayers is deleted. I respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> right now, I'm talking to the person listening. I'm talking to the person listening, and you've been here the whole time. You heard the praise and the worship and the prayers and the message and the sharing. And you see the love among this fellowship. But right now, you can't connect because right now, your life is falling apart. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Families turned away from you. Friends stabbed you in the back. And you may even feel like giving up on life itself right now. Yet somehow, you find yourself on this channel, have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you because God sees what you're going through right now. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. That's why you're here. You may be as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to sin. And now your life is falling apart. Because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil tells you, once you leave God or fail God, you could never go back. And that right there is a lie from the pit of, the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and fell back in the sin, there is nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life. Recommit your life to Christ. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So whether you're walking right now as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, or right now your life is filled with depression and darkness, fear, hopelessness, or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Either way, pray with me. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that's not like you. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us, that teaches us, that guides us, and also convict us when you're not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Not just every Sunday, every day. Spend time with God. Feed your spirit. Starve your flesh. Feed your faith. Starve your doubt every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life, which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named and unnamed, seen and unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of a mind, out of a spirit, out of a home, out of a kids, out of marriages, back to the pit of hell from which you all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose Restoration, Lord. Restore, restore every area of life, Lord. 
Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please get ahead of your over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, Lord. Spiritual healing, physical healing, emotional healing. By your stripes, we heal, Lord. And we confess it every day. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe I receive my healing. In the name of Jesus, I believe I receive my healing every day. Confess it and thank him. Confess it and thank him every day. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose. Supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough. Supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessing, Lord. Your blessings of abundance. Rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship. Every financial need. Whatever it is. For you to supply all our need. According to your riches in glory. Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything. Who the Lord is my shepherd. Who are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are the lender and not the borrower. We are blessed going in and blessed going out. We are blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of the needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, we thank you for our miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle to pray for right now. And now we know every day we take time to see it. Every day, take time and visualize your miracle. See it, believe it, and receive it in your heart. And as you receive it into your heart, expect it. Ex expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, any day, could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So we expect your miracle every day. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face a divine approval upon you and give you peace that you may be a blessing to everyone you touch and speak to, a blessing to everyone you pray over, a blessing to everyone you pass by, and blessed with our open mouth, because the love and light of the Lord is all over you, 24-7, 365, including the beer. So Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask, in Jesus' name we pray, let the fellowship say amen, amen, amen. Thank you.